Hello, everybody. Happy Friday to everybody. Welcome to Cub Chat Live. I'm Aaron. I'm joined by my good friend, Anthony. Anthony, how are you, sir? I'm fantastic. How are you, Aaron? I'm doing great. Enjoying a very rainy, cool day here in North Texas this afternoon. Uh, earlier when Anthony and I were talking, I could see a reflection in one of those pictures of these trees waving back and forth <laughs> in your front yard or wherever you are there. It's a cold fall-like day as we head into, it's almost November, I can't believe it. Uh, school nights for scouting are probably now mostly kind of in the rear view mirror. We're now moving forward into the fall program year. We've got a lot of new members, which is great. We've talked about this before. We've talked about how to welcome new families. Uh, we've talked about how to identify new leaders because a lot of troops, a lot, I'm sorry, a lot of PACs, a lot of Dems are going to need new leaders. Now that you've gotten those new leaders, Anthony, today's topic, do. how do we make them feel welcome? Yes, you've got <laughs> three, four, maybe five new moms and dads who show up and they're ready to go. How do we help them out? Anthony, just sort of uh, get us started with the conversation. What do we need to know today? Absolutely. Well, first of all, I want to start off with a with a big hooray. Uh, we have a big celebration. Um, we you just talked about lots of new families joining Cub Scouting all across the country, and we reached a big milestone this week. Uh, we now have more Cub Scouts uh, in the program than we did the ending last year. So we are already over what we call year end membership growth. Uh, which is fantastic as we know that not all school nights are done, right? So we're not done. We're recruiting and we're not done welcoming new families uh, into our packs across the country. So that's really exciting news. I'm glad to be able to share uh, with you today. So once we do have our new families on board and we are in that process of building our dens and, and last week we talked about um, how do you identify the, uh, a good leader, right? How do we make sure that that we've got the best den leader that we can? Maybe your pack is going through uh, a change of cub master. Maybe you don't have a full committee, right? So, so how do we how do we not only ask those folks, and but once we do, what do we do then, right? So, what's next? Because the worst thing that you could do is ask someone to do a job or take on a position, and then give them no tools to be successful. We right? say thanks for signing up. Good luck to you. Right, right, right. Or, or even worse, right? It's a, uh, okay, well, here's the book. Okay, yep. go to it, right? Yep. Yep. So we have a lot more resources um, to share to help parents who are new to scouting and even those who are returning because what we found is even those who have been in scouting for a year or so don't know all the resources that are available to you for free, right? It's part of the, part of the great program uh, that... Uh, right at your fingertips. So we're going to start off with the most obvious one because we're going to assume that people who are watching know nothing uh, of, of scouting. They're brand new. So again, make sure you tag someone in your pack to this uh, so that they can uh, watch this. If they can't catch it live, they can watch the episode some other time so that they can get the information directly uh, of what's available to them to be successful. So we're going to start off with scouting.org. Really easy. We're going to actually navigate this for you so you can see on the screen uh, where the resources are. So when you go to the homepage of scouting.org, top left-hand corner, programs, click on Cub Scouts. That gets you to this page. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit. This is mostly for people who are looking and are interested. But once you've joined, now this big yellow section, this is for parents. Lots of great resources there for parents. So if you're new to Cub Scouting and you haven't quite decided if you want to be in a leadership role or maybe you're just going to help out for a little bit, great information resources right there for you right there. But if you are a leader or you're seriously considering being a leader, you want to click on that little toggle there for leaders. And magically, it turns blue. And now we've got all the resources for every position that we have in Cub Scouting. So from pack committee to Cub Master to Den Leader, we're going to really focus on Den Leader because, man, those are the most important people we have uh, in Cub Scouting. So we want to make sure if you're a Den Leader that, that you know exactly how to drill down to find the information you need. The rest, very self-explanatory and actually the, the pages look very similar for each of the other roles. So we're just going to have some fun. And we're going to click on den leader resources and in the den leader resources this is for all den leaders so these are resources that no matter what grade level you're going to be working with this is what a den meeting is so again maybe you're a parent watching 
and you want to get involved or you're still trying to find a den leader in your uh, for your den, uh, this hopefully will get you a little bit more comfortable with what that is and what we might be asking you to do. So on this page is all the resources for all den leaders. Then you click on the resource for, let's just say, it looks like he's having around tiger. So we'll pick tiger, right? So we're working with first graders. Those are called tigers. And right, quick video that what is the tiger rank? What are we going to do, right? So we want to get you feeling comfortable that these activities are fun and that they're engaging. Really easy uh, tutorial on what the tiger badge is about. Then you scroll up. And there's a resources for the Tiger Handbook, the Den Leader Guide. But this is the, the key document uh, and resource for any of the Den Leaders. We also have it for Cub Masters and we have it for PAC committee members. It's the Welcome New Leader. Now, so we have one that's specifically for a Lion and Tiger Den Leader. And on this document, it, it, it is a kind of little brochure, PDF file. So you're easy to email to someone that's considering or this is a great resource to take with you. We remember last week we talked about the best way to recruit someone is face to face in a special time, right? Maybe with another volunteer, you bring this with you and it walks you through exactly. This is what we need to do to get you registered. This is where your youth protection training is. This is my not scouting. This is how you start getting to know the members of your den. All those things to get you kickstarted is a, in a list form right there. So that's the best way to get folks kicked off. Then you can start scrolling up and these are the resource, uh, sorry, scrolling down. Sorry, Brian. So there's the guide to safe scouting that's front and forward, right? We want to make sure uh, you are, you know what the rules are to doing games and activities and all those types of things. The, the great thing about Cub Scouting is if you're doing the program and you're working on requirements in the handbook, uh, you're, you're going to be, you're going to be good. But when we start going on field trips or we start doing some other things, you really want to make sure you're paying attention to the guide to safe scouting bookmark that as a resource the online version uh, because that is always the source of truth then we have our digital tools uh, that would be the next step i would get someone involved in making sure that they are connected in scout book maybe that's a that's another sit down with all your new leaders man i can't think of a better committee meeting uh, than to spend time talking about scout book and how everyone's connected and right then and there, you can make sure everyone has the right permissions and so forth. And then the scouting app is, uh, we're going to hit on that a little bit later, but the scouting app is, is that's the, the, the tool for parents to be able to see what's going on in scout book. So not necessarily a leader tool, but leaders need to know about it so that they can get their parents to download that app onto their phone uh, and start engaging with the den uh, or pack in that manner. And then we've got tips and trick videos. So if you've never done a flag ceremony before, we're, we're going to show you. We're going to, in 90 seconds, we're going to show you how to do a flag ceremony. Uh, what's the living circle when we talk about that? How do you do a closing? Um, how, how do you prepare for crafts and games and those types of things? So we got some great tips and trick videos. Again, these aren't an hour long segments. These are mostly 90 seconds. So really quick, hot, uh, hot and fast on topics that uh, that you may find very useful. And then lastly, we've got all these other resources that a den leader, specifically because we're on the tiger page, that a tiger den leader would need. So you've got the tiger den record, you've got advancement reports, all those things that maybe you're not using Scoutbook and you need some kind, you want some kind of manual process. Well, we've got that too. Um, and so all that stuff on one page for each den leader, for each of those positions. Um, so that's where, I would start off with in reviewing all that content. That's that's to me the the, the best way to get started because we try to make it as super easy. Mm -hmm. And Aaron, when you and I were in scouting, <laughs> we're we're recovering cub masters. Uh, you're nodding your head. I know all the I stuff that's on this one page used to be in about twenty different pages. <laughs> I I got the three hundred page booklet handed over to me when I first took over, and so we've come a long way in just the last, whatever it's been, 10 or 12 years or so with this section as we're showing you of scouting.org. One of the things that I really like about it, is, as Anthony said, we have so many new leaders and I think we talked about it last week, 80% or something of the families who have joined have no background in scouting whatsoever. Um, so a lot of these new leaders, they don't know what a tiger is and, they're, and you might say, okay, congratulations, your son's a tiger, your daughter's a tiger, 
the next week they might, did you say tiger or lion? I mean, they don't, they're not as familiar with it as we are. What I love about this site is it's all right there. Uh, Brian, if you could go back to that one screen, it listed all the dens. It listed the grades uh, of those dens right there. There you go, right there. Everything you need to know. So if they're trying to remember, ah, which den did I sign up for? Well, it's right there. Your, your kids in the second grade, that's the den you're leading. It's all right there. Oh, we've got a lot of folks in the comments. Quick shout out to Wendy, who's watching uh, Pack 38 and Troop 38. Uh, thank you for watching, Wendy. Rusty, thank you for watching from Ohio. Uh, Carrie tuned in from Pearl Land. Thank you, Carrie, for watching. Rob, our friend Rob, who's local here in the DFW area, they added more than 940 Cub Scouts in their district. Some packs right. added 70 Scouts. We've heard about this kind of growth. We're very excited about it. Shout out to Sarah. Uh, shout out to Bert. Uh, we appreciate all you guys watching. As Anthony said, if um, you know of a you know a new den leader, tag them. Uh, these these videos that we do will stay on this uh, Facebook page forever. You can always go back and watch them. You can you can share them with your friends um, and watch them for information. We uh, you know hopefully pro we're providing a good service. Um, okay, so Anthony, we've got our new den leaders. We've sent them to uh, scouting.org. We've gone over uh, some of the basics. You know, they, they've, they've seen that. They've, they've, they've watched their introduction to um, uh, Cub Scouting video, introduction to being a, doing a den leader. What else? Now What's what, next? Right? Yeah, now what? Uh, you know, we, we over the past several years, we've been um, spending a lot of time with leaders and, and not only through surveys, but, but through other points of contact. And this word community has really come up a lot when we talk about successful packs, successful scouting programs in general, that there's a sense of community. So my the second piece, once you've provided these tools, we've got these great assets and these great tools to help, you know, this is how you do it step by step, try to make it as simple as possible. You got to make the effort to make sure that that new leader and those new parents are being part of that community, that you're forming that new community. Uh, and so that might look like um, doing something special with just the leaders, um, doing something special at the committee meeting or making your committee meeting a little bit more fun and not as business oriented. This is a perfect time to start getting to know each member of your pack, all the new families. Um, and for some that that's a big task, right? 60, 70 new new families uh, in a pack. That's a lot of people to get to know. Um, I can't think of a better way. We talked about this, I think, two weeks ago when we talked about um, uh, pack camping and overnight camping. Uh, that was always like my go to. We would do a, a family camp out and that gave us plenty of time uh, for myself, the committee chair uh, and other key leaders that we had to start getting to know each of the members of the den. And, and we made that an assignment like like my role was to you know talk to these families and are this grade level so that we really were strategic about that and just didn't leave it to chance so that no one was left out. So finding your community. So Cup Chat Live we like to think of this as our community. We have some regular viewers. Uh, we have folks that, that love to comment and have got some great ideas that they love to share. Um, this is a great community. So get them plugged into this community. Uh, we have some great uh, volunteer run Facebook pages. Um, those are some great communities. Uh, we've, we've talked about this before, you know, how to find the right community, making sure it's positive, making sure that they're citing source documents. You know, if it's on scouting.org, if it's the website of scouting.org, you know, it's real. It, you know, that's the source document. Uh, everything else kind of take with a grain of salt. Um, but finding that, building your own local community and then getting plugged into other communities, either Cub Chat Live, but also Roundtable. So through COVID, we really had some great learning experiences with Roundtable. Roundtable is a once a month meeting. It can be in person or virtual. That is all the local families that are involved in Cub Scouts and Scouts BSA, all the scouting family in a certain area. And they come together once a month. The idea is to share thoughts, programming, get updates, learning what's going on locally in scouting. See, Aaron and I can't do that. Aaron, I can tell you what's going on right now here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It's pretty miserable day. It's like 50 degrees. It's raining. It's, it's, a, it's overcast. It's not a great day. 
Um, but we have no idea what it's like in California right now. We don't know what, what program opportunities there might be in New Jersey. We don't know what's going on in Ohio, right? So at Roundtable, you find out hyper-local community, what's going on in your hometown and scouting. There might be a service project where they're doing a food collection. There might be something that's coming up real soon where there's a fun Cub, uh, cub Day event that is at your local camp. Who knows? All that stuff you find out at Roundtable. So again, that could be virtual, it could be in person, but that is a community that you want to get people plugged into as you're welcoming them, welcoming them into scouting. So that that would be my next step uh, is to get them plugged into communities. Yes, yeah, so, and one of the, we, we, we've mentioned this before, Anthony, but I'll just plug it again. One of the things I think that we're most proud about with Cub Chat Live is that Unlike a, a handbook that's printed and, and stays around for years and years, we react to what's happening in real time as a part of our community based on feedback from you guys. So in the comments section for this video, um, as well as in some of the official Facebook groups that Anthony mentioned, that's where we get a lot of our, what are we going to do next for a show? Well, let's see what they're talking about on Facebook groups. Um, encourage all the new DIN leaders out there to participate and let us know. Yeah. What challenges are you facing? You know, what, what do you need to know more about? Um, if you're a, a current DIN leader or a current Cub Scout leader, a veteran, what kind of questions do you get from new, new DIN leaders, new families? We would love to. There may be things that we haven't even thought about that, you know, is a common question out there. Uh, would love to hear from that. Speaking of local communities out in the ATL, as I believe the kids refer to Atlanta, Bert says they've got 7,339 new scouts since August 1st. Bert, woo, that is awesome. So glad to hear that. Um, Rebecca comments, no experience with scouting before now. That's me. Rebecca, hey, welcome. welcome. Glad, yes, you're in the right place. We are glad to have you. Rebecca's from PAC 774 in Tucson, Arizona. Rebecca, my daughter's going to be going to school in Tucson here on just a few more months, she'll be out there next summer. So uh, she'll be your neighbor. Um, Catherine says, hello from Pennsylvania. Thank you for watching. Appreciate that very much. Um, uh, Bert has posted some links for from the Atlanta BSA. Our, our, our viewers often post very helpful links. And uh, this looks like an authorized link from the Atlanta Council. Thank you for posting that. We encourage everybody to and those, check. And those resources are great. There's some um, in there's some great places to get inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, we've always uh, are asked that, like, you know, where, where can, I was actually just talking with the councils, uh, asking about, you know, we want to improve our Cub Scout program, right? How do we, how do we do that? And I said, look, there's some great social media pages out there that are volunteer run. Um, and if you're looking for inspiration, that's the place to go. That's like kind of my happy place because I'm just, I'm, I'm just absolutely amazed at the creativity of some folks. And then oftentimes we'll tag each other, myself and our, our, our national chair or, or our commissioner, and we'll, and we'll tag each other in things. And that means this has potential to be like international literature. We, we should be looking at this craft or activity to actually be part of uh, an update in Cub Scouting. Uh, so when you see us do that, that's a, that's a real compliment because mm -hmm. <laughs> it means that we love what you're doing and uh, we totally want to rip it off. <laughs> <laughs> we will totally take advantage of that. Absolutely. Um, Lizette, she says she calls us Friday's Cub Chat, FCC. I, I like that, Lizette. Hey. In, in, in we can't help ourselves, can we? we it has to be an acronym. Go, <laughs> we normally go with CCL, Cub Chat Live, but I kind of like FCC. That's not bad at all. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Here's a, here's a comment from, again, you mentioned part of our community, a regular Rob says there are three steps in his opinion to becoming a great scout leader. Get trained, attend round table. Number three is probably the most important. Have fun. Yeah. Um, agree with that. Um, uh, Anthony, uh, what, what else? What, what are some other key steps and what are other advice do we have for new Cub Scout leaders? Yeah, I think Rob, I think Rob hit it right on the head. Couldn't have done any better, right? Mm -hmm. Our next thing that we want to make sure that we have people do is take training, right? Uh, and it is so important. Um, and the reason why it's important is because when we do look at social media pages and, and we talk, have conversations with new leaders that have maybe been in for a month or maybe even a year, uh, they're asking questions that were like, well, that's in this module. There's that, that's part of this training. And so it becomes very clear, very quickly that the most common questions and, I, and, and I'm going to throw out the statistic it's, it's a, uh, it's made up, but like 80% of the, 
uh, of those questions could, could have been answered if that person had taken training, right? So our training modules are designed uh, for your position. You can take though, any of the trainings, regardless of your position. So if you're interested in knowing what the cub master role is supposed to be, or the PAC committee member or committee chair, um, you can take those. You don't have to be registered in that position to take any of the training. But what we did was we designed the modules to be very short. So they're like eight minute modules. So they're, they're kind of lean and mean. They're topic based. We don't do any repetition. So you don't hear the same thing over and over again. We give you the general information that you need to know, but then we give you the source document to say, hey, if you want to learn more about this, you can click here or go to this resource and it takes you to if you want to really do a deep dive into it. But for the most part, you don't need to. Right. There's lots of things that we just want to make sure you are understanding of how to prep everything from how to get a family ready to go camping for the first time to go to the outdoors uh, to, you know, what is the advancement? Where's how is the uniform work? Uh, all those things and all those questions are answered right there. And the great thing is we're very cautious of your time. So if you watched all the modules in one sitting, it would take you two hours. That's all. So it really, we, and, and if you're a PAC committee member, right? So if you're just going to help with popcorn or you're going to be the advancement chair, um, PAC committee training is only 45 minutes. Uh, so you can do that in, in about an hour. So those things are kind of, very basic, right? There's the, it's the entry point. It starts you on your learning journey. That's the way that we like to say that it's your learning journey, right? We never stop learning. Uh, so this is kind of that first stop. Because after that, uh, local councils, as, uh, in addition to roundtable, uh, they may have um, uh, one day training events. They sometimes are called you know, university scouting or scouting you or, or uh, uh, scout college um, or training extravaganza, right? Everyone kind of likes to put their own flavor to things, but usually it's like a one day training where you're going to learn hyper local from those local pack leaders. Hey, here's the best place to go camping. Here's the best place to take your kids for a field trip and, and other types of resources um, as you continue that learning journey. Uh, and then ultimately you may see um, that there's a, uh, a course called Wood Badge, and Wood Badge is another great opportunity. Wood Badges are going to teach you necessarily what the uniform is supposed to look like. Wood Badge is a, an adult leadership training, and truly that's what that focus is. It's developing you as an individual into a leader, and, and the content there is great stuff. So we always recommend Wood Badge as well. You don't have to have been in for a long time. You can jump into Wood Badge, but you do want to have your basic training done first. Um, speaking of folks who haven't been into it for a long time, Anthony, I want to point out Melissa's comment. Uh, she says, no scouting experience before last October. So about a year ago, yeah. she's now the committee chair. And she says she works for the council in Las Vegas. Melissa, that is so cool. She says they have a great network of commissioners that offer support and guidance to units. Boy, we could... We could do a whole segment, a whole show on commissioners. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure we have uh, yeah, another right. great resource for new unit leaders is your uh, commissioner, Rob. Um, that's how you trigger Rob. You talk about commissioners. He's going to start commenting on that <laughs> any minute now. Uh, Rick says hello from Troop and Pack 720 in Lehigh, Florida. Uh, Rick, thank you for watching. We appreciate that. Um, okay. Uh, speaking of, of triggering people, you mentioned Wood Badge. So here's Celeste uh, from Pack. Cub Scout Pack 294 in Oregon, uh, Scapoose, 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 you think? Anyway, she attended Wood Badge. It was amazing. I wish there was one that was more Cub centric, but please go if you can. Yeah, Wood Badge is definitely um, worth uh, the, the time. Um, here's a question, Anthony, that I would love to take a second to address. Rebecca says, any idea from for running pack meetings while blending dens basically their pack meetings are yes. also doubling as their den meetings because they're so small right now so they're, they're they've got we've talked about this before how that's an option yeah. right to combine it together uh we've kind of addressed this before but anthony maybe you could address rebecca's question real quick yeah rebecca in fact uh this is um <laughs> this is right in my wheelhouse because uh when we started our pack it was really small and we had a blend of of kids that were in third grade and my 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 son was in first grade uh, so the bulk of kids were in first grade, but we had some, uh, we had a third grader, we had a fourth grader. Uh, so what I really focused on was 
Um, and I think we did a show. Oh, no, we're going to do a show coming up about just fun pack activities and pack fun meeting, uh, fun pack uh, meetings. Um, focus on fun, creative activities. But also, if you're not the creative type or you're in a pinch, um, I never hesitated to start looking at my community resources. Um, we found someone who was um, who trained animals, uh, service animals in our local community. They came out. They love talking to scouts. Um, my favorite was always just to call up. We had a we had a wildlife uh, refuge um, facility that they would bring out animals uh, that had been injured that they're re rehabilitating. Uh, kids love that. Parents love that. So look for those opportunities where you're just really focused on the fun. And then on the kind of behind the scenes stuff, you can start looking at, OK, um, well, as a den or as a pack, we're not going to be able to do these this requirement for your child because your child you know, is the only third grader. Um, but look at your handbook. Right. Because that's the great thing. We designed them this way uh, is that the handbook is super easy to follow so you can be at home. Make sure your parents understand that they, they can take the book with your child at home and they can do requirements. They can do an adventure together um, and that everything doesn't have to be in a den or pack setting. Um, and then once you start building that, uh, I guess, uh, uh, that momentum and you've got a uh, critical mass, uh, then you can start going into, you know, separate dens and, you know, got six or eight kids in, in, in a grade level. OK, now we're ready to have a den on their own. Um, but, yeah, we a lot of combined events and activities, um, making sure that you're having uh, games that everyone can compete in. And this is where um, I would strongly encourage, especially if it's a small group, parents, don't let parents stand by. Don't don't set the expectation that you think parents aren't going to do anything. Just do the opposite. Expect that parents are going to be in there playing with their playing with their kids uh, and enjoying their time together with their kids too. So when you're thinking of activities, think would this be fun for a child and their parent to be doing together, not just the child. Uh, and that's that that's a key element, especially with small packs. Absolutely. Uh, as we always do, we have some folks in the comments being very helpful with suggestions. I uh, hope Rebecca scroll through the comments and check that out. Um, Rebecca says, thank you. There we go. Rebecca says, thank you for the ideas and hints. Appreciate that very much. Yes. And Rebecca, thank you so much for watching. That's what we're here for. Yeah. We are here literally. <laughs> that's why we do for this. You. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. Um, we've just got a couple of minutes left before we let you guys go. We want to talk. I think Anthony, is it safe now yeah. to talk about our new little thing that yeah. we're starting up? Speaking of feedback, speaking of getting, you know, uh, some responses from you guys. Anthony, why don't you, why don't you tell the folks what we're going to do real quick here before we let them go? Sure. Um, if, if you've watched the show in the past or, um, you know, we've, we've talked about this in, uh, before when we make decisions in Cub Scouting on the national level, uh, we don't, it's not just five of us sitting in a room going, Hmm, this is why I think Cub Scouting should be, or this is what I like to do. So everyone else should be liking, you know, is going to like, uh, love doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, we really love to get feedback and we do act on that feedback. So um, we were looking at Cup Chat Live and we're like, hey, we should get feedback. So we'd love to hear from you. So uh, at this time, even if it's recorded, like, so if you're if you're not watching this live and, and, and uh, you're watching this as a recording, go ahead, uh, take your phone, boop, pop that QR code uh, onto your screen. Uh, we're going to ask you two questions. <laughs> that's it. That's the that's, that's biggest of the survey this is going to get. Just rate the show. Just let us know how we're doing. Two we measly know, questions. Yeah. Do we answer your questions? Did you, you know, so it's just a five star rating. Um, and then we're, we want to know, like, who are you? So we're going to ask you, are you just a parent? Uh, are you a parent and, and den leader? Are you a commissioner? So you click all that apply. Uh, and when we ask you who you are, because we also want to know who our audience is. Uh, because our ideal, we want to be talking to parents and den leaders and Cub Scout leaders, right? Folks who are directly involved in Cub Scouting. We're, we're not sure because of this format, if that's who we're reaching. So that's really, uh, instead of guessing, we want to know. We really would like to know. Uh, and so uh, if you can do that, it's going to literally take you four clicks. You're going to click on the screen, right? You're going to open up in your browser. You're going to give us the star rating, and then you're going to click uh, what position you are. So uh, hopefully that super easy and we get a good response from that. Again, you don't have to be watching live. Uh, this is going to be up uh, throughout the week. Uh, so you can click on that and let us know. 
uh, we yes. appreciate that feedback. Awesome. I have tried the QR code. It works. Uh, I gave a five star rating, but you know I'm uh, I'm a little uh, bit biased. A little biased um, right? <laughs> before we let everybody go, just a, a few more quick shout outs. Um, Elizabeth is watching, also from Atlanta. Appreciate that. Um, Jesse says that their meetings they have stations set up, and I think what they're saying is they you know they have different stations and parents volunteer at the different stations, and the Cub Scouts rotate through the different stations doing different activities. That's that a, a great thing to do, right? And that that's also we, we talked about this as a, a great tie into. Maybe you've already had your formal recruitment event, like where you've done this, you know, rallies and yard signs and flyers in a school. And um, those type of events and pack meetings where you're going to have stations of fun activities and parents are many, ask parents to invite their friends that they know of who've got kids in the school, right? Uh, that have similar age kids. Because those are what we call normal friend events, right? Normal normal friend activities, mm -hmm. NFAs. Um, and so that's a great time to not stop recruiting, right? Because it's easy for someone to slide in now, right? When we get past, you know, I know December, January, there's some pushback as, you know, they're they're far behind and are they going to be able to catch up? But now still a prime time to kind of do that second run and, and invite folks and, and let parents know, hey, if you're having a good time, spread the fun around. Absolutely. And of course, Wendy, we're going to show your comment. Obviously, we're not going to end the show without showing that comment. Thank you so much for, for doing the survey, Wendy. And of course, appreciate the kind words. Uh, before we let you go, Anthony, we do have one more question from a, from a viewer, Celeste, not exactly related to our show today, but I think it's a good okay. question while she's got you. Yep. She has a question about the preview adventures. Uh, what's the status of those? Any new ones that we can look forward to? Uh what I can tell you is that um, the National Cup Scouting Committee has been working diligently over the past three years, um, and uh, and we are hoping that uh, you're going to see the result of a lot of that work come out really fairly soon. Uh, I can't commit on a timeline on that, but um, I can tell you that uh, our, our mission is to continuously improve the Cub Scout program and improve your experience. That might be through preview adventures. It might be through other methods and other ways. So uh, that's as much information I can get on that. But but that's rest assured, we're not we we're not just uh, we're not sitting on our hands. Uh, we've got some great stuff in the pipeline. So Les, this is why we do these shows, and this is why Anthony comes on with us, so you can ask questions like that. Uh, as we close, Elizabeth. You don't have to apologize if we could just uh, uh, acknowledge Elizabeth's comment real quick. She says uh, she loves Cub Chat Live. Her rating is 110 out of 100. Sorry for being biased because I love scouting and helping my friends. No apology needed. Elizabeth, it's <laughs> right? totally fine. We appreciate that very much. Um, thank you all for watching. Excellent, excellent thoughts today. Anthony, any final comments, any final thoughts before we let the folks go today? I uh, No, as you're on, I guess the the... The, the last you know piece I want to leave you with is if you are onboarding new parents or if you are new, um, you know, understand that we have some folks that are very passionate about scouting and they really want everyone to feel and share that passion uh, on the same level that they do. But but sometimes you don't get that right away. And so keep that in mind. If you are an experienced leader and you just love Cub Scouting, know that new parents may not they haven't had that opportunity yet, right? They haven't had the the experience with their child to see that impact that it has on them and their family and their child. Uh, and so that takes a little time to grow that that love. So so keep that in mind when you're onboarding folks. Don't expect them to jump in feet first and, and just be super excited out of the gate. Let them go on that journey uh, uh, and, and bring them along. Appreciate them. Thank them. Uh, thank your parents. Uh, and... Um, and when you have that positive environment, it's really easy uh, to get folks to be engaged and be involved and ultimately, right, fulfill the mission of what we're trying to do, right? We're, we're here to build leadership, character, citizenship, and personal fitness. Those are the aims of our program. That's that's what we're trying to do. Uh, and we can't do it. We do that through fun in Cub Scouting. So uh, yeah. keep that in mind. Not everyone... Um, gets super excited about scouting right away. Yes. Uh, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Let them go on their journey. Yeah. They, they might not know what they've gotten themselves into. Uh, they might have some apprehension and that's totally cool. I did too, back in the day, uh, being positive. You said, Anthony, boy, I think being cheerful 
so to speak. Right. That goes a long way into creating that attitude in that community where people are comfortable asking questions. If they're a new leader, they're comfortable coming to you with questions or concerns or anything like that. And that's exactly what you want. You don't want to create an atmosphere where they're fearful and stressed out and don't really know what to do and don't know who to ask. Right. Right. 100% agree. Thank you all for watching. What a good show today. I appreciate it very much. Keep those comments coming. Keep that advice coming. We'll have to do this Take again sometime, Anthony. Yeah. Put the survey back up, Brian. And we'll, let's put the survey back up. Brian will put the survey up one more we'll time. Please rate everyone. this. Please rate this episode. <laughs> it is, uh, as we said, a two question survey. QR code works. I've tried it. Uh, we've had several folks in the comments who have tried it as well. Give it a shot. We appreciate it very, very much. Anthony, good job today. We will you see too. you guys. You're we will fantastic. see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye, right. everybody.